Shalom family, it's your man Eliah. Thank you for joining me in unsectarian wisdom and as usual. I'm a wise, wealthy, rich, celestial being that is loved by the Most High Creator. Let's go ahead and jump in, family. Oh, and by the way, I just got back from watching The Black Adam. Obviously, you saw from when it first popped up on the screen, so I'm doing like a little occult review. And if you've already seen the movie and you're looking at this uh, at this review right now, and you've already seen many, seen other of my videos, then you know why I'm just like cheesing, right? You know, you see what I'm saying right now. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't know, it's because you haven't seen the movie yet. But once you see the movie, you'll see why. It's almost like the universe is talking to me. It's like it's showing me I'm on the right path. You know, he's not crazy. But anyway, too, another um, disclaimer. Family, look. This wisdom search, the deeper you get in it, I need to just put out this PSA. It is not about so-called skin color, okay? It is not about these made-up labels that society puts upon us. If you continue to keep your mind, I know, look, we all make comments and stuff, but if that's really in your heart, if you're really out here judging people and, and this and that, look, it's going to hold you back. And then also there's truths, family, that you need to accept to understand the truth. You know, and, and when I say accept... Not accept it like, like it's a way of life or something like you a slave, but accept it because it's the truth. Because you're only going to find the ultimate truth if you accept all the truth. You have to accept all the truth, not just part of the truth. So anyway, I just wanted to say, just real quick, it's not about color, but I'm going to say some things tonight. And I don't mean disrespectful things. Like I'm not calling nobody out because that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm trying to show you guys something. And I want people to get their feelings hurt. I'm just, this is what I see from my studies, okay? That's all I'm saying. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump in. So, Black Adam, right? Let me, um, my bad. Let me get this off of here. Oh, so that was a, that was my my little PSA warning. So let's start off right here. Let's start off with uh, oh, okay. First, let's look at the characters, right? We go we go start off with Hawkman, right? Who's played by all this Hodge? All right. So for my my avid Bible readers and studiers. Um, you're familiar with the beast of revelations, right? The beast with many heads has many crowns upon its head, right? And this beast represents the different kings and kingdoms um, throughout history, like the Persian Empire, Greek em Empire, Babylonian Empire, all the way up to the Roman Empire and all that. Also going back to the book of Daniel and the statue made of clay and iron and um, copper and the different minerals, right? Talking about the different kingdoms. So, Hawkeye is representation of Rome. Hawkeye is representation of the Catholic Church. Hence, the eagle of Rome, of the legions above Rome. You know what I'm saying? The eagle. Look at the way that his armor looks. Also, is that crimson red? But that looks fondly like the red that a lot of, that we see like when we study history books and stuff that the legionnaires wore or the emperors or whoever. This is the red they wore. I think it's called Crimson Red. I could be wrong, but I believe it's Crimson Red. But Hawkeye is representation of the Catholic Church. Hawkeye is representation of the beast system. Hawkeye is representation of man. So just throw that out there. You know, representation of the church, the Catholic Church. All right, so who are we going to look at next? Who's next to Hawkeye? I should have just did an order. But who's next to a Hawkeye? Cyclone, right? Played by this movie, Quintessa Swindle. Oh, actually, no, no, that's the, no we're going to talk about Dr. Fate next and it's for a reason dr fate in this movie hold on I, I know i got a picture of dr fate where's doctor okay pier dr fate played by pierce bronson in the movie right he is representation hold on let me see if i can find you guys another picture of dr fate real quick so i can show you two different comparisons all right, here's one picture of Dr. Fate, right? I don't know, I'll show up with the same thing. Here he is, you see him? All right, that's a drawing. All right, now let's get back to Sir Pierce Bronson. So in this movie, Dr. Fate is representation of, let's say either, I would say both, is representation of England, and also representation of America is is he's representation of capitalism. He's representation of you know Europeans, but Caucasian Europeans, right? 
henceforth the Egyptian symbols and the unk. This is an unk, representation of an unk. What's an unk? Unk. The unk symbol sometimes referred to as the key of life or the key of the Nile. It's representative of eternal life in the ancient ancient Egypt. So in other words, like the Unk family is like representative. Hold on, let me see if I can find a bigger picture so I can explain a little bit. So the Unk family. Let me pull. Actually, it's a good one. This is where you get your cross from, just so you didn't know. But the Unk family, yeah, this explains it. The circle represents the female. In the arms. Right, well, actually represents the legs of the female spread open, and this is the womb of the female, and this is the penis. That's the same thing with the cross, but the cross took the woman off, right, and just kept the, the penis. But the circles also is not only represent, representation of the woman's womb, but it's also representation of life, the circle of life, reincarnation. And this is how, and, and the penis is under it, right, because it's representation of. This is how we get into life, at least in this 3D realm. We have to come through the womb of the woman. So that's part. I mean, there's more meanings to the unk, but that's one of the main reasons, right? Matter of fact, here's another picture of it to give you, see, show you on top about. You see right here on this picture? Hold on, let me see, read it. It says female receiving life force. Hold on, let me see if it get bigger. Okay, well, I can't, I can't find a bigger picture. So we gonna, we gonna take the L for that one. That's my fault for not being more prepared on that. Should have. Well, maybe this is a bigger. Okay, this is a bigger picture. I think more detailed. I'm not saying all this information that's coming up on here is necessarily true, but I just want to show you the comparison. I'm not lying about how you see the unk, and then the female anatomy. So. Anyway, so who was I talking about? Oh, yeah, I was talking about Dr. Fate. So Dr. Fate, why, oh, my bad. Oh, why I was saying that he represents the U.S. It's because, once again, U.S. is, well, at this point, United States of America is a proxy of, whether you know it or not or believe it or not, of England, the U.K., the Queen. God save the Queen, right? So that's why you have Sir Pierce Bronson here. In this year, that's why he represents fate. He represents the money. And then when, when he's in the movie, you'll notice the way he dresses. He dresses like, I think in England they call him like the posh type, I believe. You know, aristocrat types, where they dress very proper. You know, the people who, you know, the rich businessman type. This is who Pierce Bronson represents in this movie. And Hawkeye, who I showed you before, he represents Rome and the money that Rome has and the power. And you'll see what I'm talking about. But, oh, and also, remember Washington, D.C., right? The obelisk. Remember, Washington, D.C. is steeped in a lot of Egyptian symbolism and lore and things of that nature, right? Once again, European European um, influence. Well, Caucasian European influence. And I'm, reason, and I'm saying that for a reason. I'm not trying to point it. The reason I'm saying Caucasian for a reason, because, once again, Pierce Bronson, He's representing something. And look, this, once again, it's not, this ain't me doing this whole, oh, your ancestors did this. Look, I'm not taking no blame on, off nobody. I'm not putting no blame on anybody. I'm just explaining the story. I'm trying to connect the dots. And in order for us to change, in order for us to ascend, in order for us to get to where we're going, family, look, we got to get to the truth. It's going to come out one way or another, okay? So please don't be sensitive. Just go with me. So just like when I did that lesson on Star Wars, the metachlorians, look, get your feelings out of it, man. I'm trying to look. Anyway, <laughs> let me stop. So anyway, so Pierce Bronson, right? He represents in this movie, like I said, the U.S. or England, U.K. And them using all the powers from the mystery schools in Egypt to give themselves power to try and um, change the future. So things of that nature. So this is who Pierce Bronson is, right? And he is best friends with who in this movie? With Hawkeye. So it's the Catholic Church and the, and the Queen, the Catholic Church and the Queen of England together. So that's what they represent in this movie. All right, who next? Um, 
All right, let's go ahead and cyclone. Let's go ahead and do cyclone since we're here. We'll do uh, we'll we'll do that. Okay, let me see. Do I have anything up about cyclone? Okay, no. Let's see who cy. Okay, so in this movie, cyclone. Look, I'm not an avid like comic book reader or anything like that. So anybody who's a comic book reader, look, you gotta forgive me if I mess up her powers or whatever. But from what I got from the movie. Cyclone, her powers are, she's almost like Storm. She's like, I guess, the DC version of Storm. So if you're familiar with Storm from X-Men, Marvel, she controls weather. That's why they call her Cyclone. So basically what she is in the movie, she represents to me because she's on the side of Hawkeye and, and Mr. Fate or Dr. Fate. And basically what she represents to me is she is the technology. She's like Harp. She represents Harp. She represents the the ability to control the weather, right? That's what that basically she represents um, the governments like U.S. and England and the Catholic Church having so much money and power that they're able to now have the technology to control weather. So that's what she represents in this movie, like Harp and CERN and things of that nature. All right, and then let's go back. We got this fella right here. Adam Smasher, who played by Noah Centino. So Adam Smasher, hold on. My bad, family. I want to give you guys a better picture so you guys can see the characters. So Adam Smasher is representation of like, I would say what I was getting, you know, the military might, nuclear bomb. He represents the power of man harnessing science. Harnessing the power of the atom within, you know, their palms and their hands. This is what he represents. He's him and Cyclone are just a flex for Hawkeye and Dr. Fate. Because like I said, Hawkeye represents Rome, the Vatican. Um, and Dr. Fate represents America and England, Babylon. Well, they're all Babylon together. So that's what these characters represent. And then when you come over here. Hold on. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get into uh, who? The hero of the story, right? Or so-called hero, Black Adam. So I'm, I'm going to put you all guys on some some characters, right? So you got Black Adam, played by obviously The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. But Black Adam also has a son. And this is a son in the movie, um, but his son dies in the movie. So I'm going to tell you who Black Adam and his son are, right? So Black Adam is okay black adam's son is jesus right or yahusha now for my egyptologists out there black adam is or his son is representation of horus right so okay okay let me separate okay there's three different characters there's the rock there's black adam and his son in the movie obviously he doesn't call his name the rock but i'm, I'm, I'm putting this way for a reason so there's a di oh actually you know what no I don't have to do that okay so Black Adam's son in the movie represents Yahusha or Horus or Jesus the Messiah or whatever religion or Buddha this is who Black Adam's son in the movie represents Black Adam or the Rock or even call him is representation of God the Creator of the universe in the movie but also. There's another uh, character in the movie whose representation I would almost say maybe like a King Nebuchadnezzar type, you know, King of Babylon um, type like that. Or, and he is representation of the world. He's representation of Lucifer in the movie, devil. And there's a guy who is a descendant of him in this movie, and he's representation of the devil. Matter of fact, um, let me see if I can, uh, let me go back. Cause I just thought about something. Okay, um, I gotta pull something up for you guys, family. So, um, Black Adam, right? Villain. Hold on. Hmm. Bear me a second, family. I'm trying to, um... I'm 
trying to find you the the characters, right? Omar Mohammed. Who did he play in the movie? Okay, yeah, 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 okay. No, it's not him. Okay, so it's gonna be him. Okay, so this fella, well, he might play. He played one or two one of one of these two characters in the movie, right? This guy right here, um, Mara Kanzari. I'm not sure who he played in specifically in um, Black Adam, but he was either playing the king, the evil king, or the devil, which was really both in the same. Anyway, when you see the movie, you know you know what I'm talking about. So in the movie, this character, he was, like I said, a version of like let's say Nebuchadnezzar. And fast forward, he's the descendant. So back in the day, Black Adam killed this this character. It wasn't Nebuchadnezzar in the movie. It was it was I, the the country it was a made up country called Kandar. And matter of fact, this movie, if you, matter of fact, if you are into reset stories or before I forget about it, while we're on the subject, if you're into my readings on books like this, like Lands of Mars and Terra Infinita in the map, this movie right here gives a lot of confirmation on that too. Um, in certain aspects, as far as how could I explain it? In the movie, they go to Antarctica, and there's a secret base under the water in Antarctica with all types of mutants and stuff, and, and secret probably weapons and soldiers. And if you follow follow other conspiracy theories and stuff, you know, people have already been talking about how the government has secret bases, not only under the water in the ocean, but in Antarctica. And in this movie, there's a secret base under the water, under the ice in Antarctica. They went to Antarctica. Okay, so when they captured Black Adam, right, the justice in the movie, in, uh, okay, let me not tell the movie like that. So in the movie... They end up taking Black Adam to Antarctica. That's all I'm going to say about that. So, just saying, references, family, it's all in here. Like I said, if you have the cult understanding and knowledge, if you've done the study, reading the Bible and all this, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. You can connect the dots. So, the guy who I told you right here, um, what's his name? Marwin Kazari. Like I said, he basically turned into Lucifer in the movie. Or the devil or Satan, whatever you want to call it. So, this is where it gets interesting a little bit. Remember how I said that Black Adam is God, right? He represents God, and his son, who died here, represents Jesus, Yahusha, Horus. But Black Adam also represents Zeus. Black Adam also represents the yin and the yang. Black Adam is also a mixture of Lucifer and Yahusha. And that's actually what I got from the movie The Message too, as well. Um, that it's almost like in the movie you see justice. It's like when you go to the country of Kandar, it's like you see the downtrodden who are oppressed by the system, who are oppressed by capitalism, who are oppressed by Rome and the governments and all these things, right? And justice and Hawkeye in the movie are, repre are representation of these entities, of these government entities coming to these two coming to subdue the downtrodden of the country of Kandar, right? So in the movie that's who their representation of and Black Adam shows up as God, not as Messiah. His son in the movie when he was who he was was the Messiah. And that's like in the Bible, his son is representation of Yahusha or Jesus or Horus upon the earth ministering to people before he Put himself on the cross, right? To so he can um, send back the Holy Spirit. If you read the Bible, right? So Black Adam's son is representation of that. But when Black Adam comes back to the world, he's representation of the son coming back, or God coming back, or the Creator coming back to the earth for Judgment Day. And at first, he's fighting certain heroes who are representation of the world, who are Hawkman and Doctor Fate. So. So when I say he's a representation of Jesus and Lucifer, it's like the mixture. Because remember, everything came from the dark. That was the creator, creation. There is no yin and yang without the creator. There is no so-called good without the evil. The creator created good and evil. 
it's part of the test. It's part of this probation. So that's why Black Adam is a mix between the creator. No, it's a mix between Lucifer and Yahusha, Horus, Jesus, whatever you want to call him, the Messiah. Because it's that yin and yang. It's that coming to the... It's like basically the world, you know, when they talk about justice, the justice system, how justice will prevail. But how many criminals are allowed to get away with things because of our society, because of how much money they have, or because of the power or strength they have? That was the message behind the Black Adam movie, too, when it came to people not liking certain heroes because of bias. And also, I want to tell you guys, family, Hawkman, the reason why in this movie, and you might say that it's a coincidence, but this is another thing, too, when you understand, when you start getting into esoteric things, the cult, when you start getting into spiritual reading and really start getting down to it, not just the Bible and the Quran and Buddhist, but really diving in, you know what I'm saying? Like, things like freaking um, the Kabbalion, things that when you really start understanding, everything happens for a reason. And the reason he's a, a man of color family, this takes me right back to this. And I brought this forth, brings you back. Look, it brings us back to the truth. I'm, I'm, is, the truth is going to come out one day, family. It's coming out slow and slow. This show right here is called Knots and Crosses. That in this show, the premise of this show, family, and I'm going to show the preview of the show at the end because I don't, just in case there's a copyright or something, I don't want them to, I want to put the end so I can take it off in the end if, if I have to. But this show, family, Knots and Crosses, if you get a chance to watch it, this show is a, uh, hold on, let me see. Okay, so basically the point of the show is what if instead of, let's say in history, Africa was actually this really powerful empire that ended up invading and ruling Europe, right? So almost how you see like, let's say America, let's say almost say what if slavery was flip, flipped around, right? And it was people, of melanated people who were the slave masters. But anyway, go back to knots and crosses, cross the ocean or as I say the pond, Africa is the ruling class over all of Europe, like England, France, you know, uh, Germany, Russia, everything. Africa rules everything. And the premise of the show is that the African people are now rulers over the uh, Caucasian European people. Like the Caucasian European people are basically their servants to the upper melanated class of African people, right? So... What I'm getting to, family, is, look, let, uh, let's just say this. There's this theory around that actually the first Europeans were actually melanated people. And that's who I'm saying Hawkeye represents. Is that the funny thing is, family, when we live by his story, you don't really know the story. Like I say, the victor writes history. And I'm honestly at, under the opinion at this point, I personally think like the Roman Empire back in the day, they were melanated people. Personally, I think Africa back in the day or so-called Africa, or or they were more, or the children of Ham were once a superpower, a lot more powerful than we give them credit for. And they actually were so powerful that they ruled not only Africa, but Europe. And that they were the kings and queens. Like the, a lot of movies we see, and, and we see European nobles, and that they weren't actually Caucasian people. That they were actually melanated people. And that's why Hawkeye is who he is in this movie representing Rome. And that's why in this scene right here, I want you to see this. Who is this character we see? And people and, and people might say, oh, he, they're not the only people that, he, that he's done this to. Family. But they're the only people that people have really been talking about and making a really big deal about. Because this is saying something. There's more behind this than you think. This is almost to me like showing homage to like basically behind closed doors. Basically what the Pope is saying. Look at the end of the day. We know who used to be in charge back in the day. We remember who the true royalty was. But it is what it is. All's fair in love and war as they say right. We won. We in charge now. But things are happening in the world now. And they trying to save face. That's all I'm saying, family. This Look, this is what I'm getting from this. This is the truth coming out about what's what. But then the next truth is going to come out about who the past leaders of the world, who they invaded and whose land they took over. Because black, okay, I'll put it like this. 
Black Adam. Hold on. Where where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Forgive me, family. Black Adam, right? No, let me get a better picture of Black Adam. Let me get something better. Family in the movie, Black Adam represents America, the indig the indigenous aboriginals, the indigenous Nijis of America. This is who he represents. In his country, Kandahar represents Israel. Will you go watch the movie, family? The people of Kandahar represent Israel. And they're under subjugation of Egypt. Egypt representation of bondage. Bondage. Um, mystrium, you know, things of that nature. But Black Adam is, I am that I am. He representation of God. The God of who? The Jews. The lightning, the thunderbolt. Representation of light. Representation of wisdom. Thunder. The lightning bolt, which came from who? The dark, the ether, which represents what? The ether. Remember, everything came from the dark, family. The black atom represents the dark, the ether. The lightning coming from it. That's the light. You know what I'm saying? Coming from the ether. That's the wisdom. That's the power coming from God. The wisdom, the knowledge. That That's the thunder. That's Zeus. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. That's what I'm seeing now. Everything, like I said, family, everything, everything leads back to the same point. The path is narrow. And few will find it. But the narrow, but many paths have, but many paths lead to the narrow path. Yes, there's only one narrow path, but many paths converge and intersect, leading to the narrow path. Until until they all converge and they're on the same path. There is only one truth. There is only one path. But many paths. Eventually, if you continue on the path, no matter no matter where you are, continue to have faith, continue to pray, continue to study, research. You'll eventually make it to the narrow path if that's what you want in your heart. If you're willing to do the work, if you're willing to change and accept the truth. That's all I'm saying, family. So what else? Um, I know that's a lot talking about. That's all I'm saying. What else um, do I want to say about this movie? Um, dang, okay. I want to make sure I don't forget anything. So... Okay, so Hawkman, like I said, um, melanated European Roman Church, Catholics, that's who he uh, represents. Dr. Fate represents England, America, Babylon. Black Adam represents God, but also Yahusha, Jesus, Horus at the same time. And don't forget it, his son, his son is Yahusha. But at the end of the, at the, end of the day, in the movie, at the end of the day, Black Adam ends up being God at the end of the day. As, when you see the movie and you and you understand what I'm saying, you'll understand what I'm saying later. Um, oh, Isis, she wasn't in the movie. Oh, yes, she was. She was the mother of uh, Black Adam's son. So she is... Well, actually, I don't know if she was because she wasn't in the movie. But she looks like the woman who either played as The Rock's wife in the movie or she played as the mother of... This one character's, um, she, she played the character, the mother character of this one character who, who played this young boy who was friends with Black Adam. So she would be represent, Isis would be representation of the wife of, uh, will, will, we will be representation of, uh, Mary, Mary Magdalene, mother of Yahusha. So just putting that out there, family, or Jesus, Horus, whatever you want to say. It's the same story, family. Look, I want to say, I want to say this too, family, look. I believe that there's many Yahushas. There's been many Messiahs. But, and then also, when it comes to the Messiah, as far as from the Bible, whether you want to call him Jesus or Yahusha, I'm not, look, I believe in the Messiah. But I also believe that there's a possibility that the Messiah that I believe in is not at all the Messiah from the Bible. Not to say that he didn't do the things from the Bible or say the things. Because this is why we say, family, you got to look at the message. What I'm saying is, like for instance, Horus, if you compare the story of Horus to Jesus, it's the same story. So it's not that my Messiah isn't real. It's just the truth has been withheld from me. So I don't know what time my Messiah really lived in or what city or what country he was really in. I just know my Messiah was real. My king is real. And that's the faith that I have on the message. My faith isn't on the name Jesus. My faith isn't isn't necessarily on the name Yahusha. Yes, call these names. Yes, 
yes, the creator knows, but the creator only knows or Yahushua only knows who you're talking to because of your feelings, because of your heart. Remember, the word says God knows your heart. So even if it's not the creator's real name, because the creator has many names, at the end of the day, it's the feeling, it's the understanding. God is in your heart and your mind, so God knows who you're talking to. So that's why I had to learn, too. Like I said, I don't really get stuck on the, the Jesus, Yahushua conversation anymore. That, that was like, that's like, that's like kid stuff, arguing over the name, because at the end of the day, it's not, anyway, that's all I want to say, family. Um, Like I said, I just want to say, it's the message. I'm not saying, I believe in the Messiah. At some point, there was a, there was the first Messiah. Who started off all the other messiahs, and that's who I'm going to, and that's also this. And if you wonder what I'm talking about, what do you mean multiple messiahs? This gets into the term Christos. This gets into the Buddha. This is why I say you gotta read, family. This is why in the Bible he says you would do the things I've done and even greater, because you are the Messiah. This is why he had, he said I had to die on the cross, because if I didn't die on the cross, I wouldn't be able to send back to you the Holy Spirit, aka the wisdom, the understanding. It was all for a purpose, family. Anyway, and that's why I wanted to put this all together. It's it. In the, and once again, you might be like, why are y'all talking about Christian family? I pop, No, I don't apologize. I was raised in a Christian background. I'm no longer a Christian. I don't go to church. But that's just my, my, that's just my background. But I also claim and I also point out the truths in Islam and, and Buddhism and, and, and the occult writings. Because they all go together if you put the studying and the work in yourself, family. They all go together. They all intersect. But you got to get yourself out of that box. You got to get yourself out of prison. In order to get to heaven, you have to become like a child again, right? So you got to put that study in. You got to read. That's how you unlock the knowledge. If you don't do it yourself, like I said, you put in work to be a doctor, a lawyer, a rapper, a singer, a act, whatever you want to be, right? Well, you got to put that same work into the creator. You got to put that same work into seeking wisdom and knowledge and discernment and, and the secrets of the universe and get understanding for self, man. You got to look within and all that good stuff, family. Anyway, family. Uh, I might have forgot some stuff. I always do. But at that case, though, I'm pretty much done. Um, please like, subscribe. Um, if you have anything that you want to um, throw in there, please go ahead. Leave a comment. Also, I'm going to play this Knots and Crosses preview at the end for you. And uh, all praise to the Most High family. I enjoyed y'all. Um, the Like I said, the movie is decent. I said matinee. I went in matinee. So if you go be out of matinee, that's on you. But uh, be blessed, family. I'm going to play this, and then I'm going to be out. This is Knots and Crosses. Let me remind you of a certain truth. There is strength in difference. Things are never going to change, are they? You can keep a secret, can't you? Crosses will be exposed for what they are. The Norns are content to see our culture swept away. Every time I see you, there she is too. You tried to kill her! This is what happens when you push people too far. I'm afraid of dying. Well, that's the cause as well. There he is. I want to stop it real quick, family, just in case. Oh, I didn't even have it on there. Look, I'm sitting here. Look, family, I apologize. I'm sitting here. Look. <laughs> I apologize. Let me play it. Here you go. Let me there remind you, you of a certain there truth. You. There is strength. Just real quick so I can pause because I'm trying not to get no, uh, you know, stuff. You know what I'm saying? Indifference. Things are never going to change, are they? This is not the crosses. The crosses will be exposed for what they are. The Norns are content to see our culture swept away. Every time I see you, there she is too. You tried to kill her! This is what happens when you push people too far. I'm afraid of dying. Well, that's the cause as well. There he is. From now on, you come first. Always. Shalom, family, later.